where we are on the right doctors.com and I have a pleasure to invite Dr. Vijay Lakshmi who is a professor in neonatal and pediatric cardiology in Bangalore Medical College. What else I can say about her? If I have to describe in one few words, I would rather say she's a tomboy of the pediatric cardiology or rather the <laughs> cowboy of the pediatric cardiology. I was talking to her just a few minutes ago and I wish I could have been her student during my medical school. Nonetheless, I got the chance to read her the books, read about the books, the pediatric cardiology books uh, that was written by herself itself and then the forward which was done by Dr. Perloff, if I, if I, if yes. I remember correctly. Yeah? Well, so here we are and, and to be honest, this is kind of a first conference as in, in the World Congress of Cardiology in Metabolic Medicine. And uh, I can't recall that is there has, has there been any such a meeting there before where they are, they are mainly focusing on preventive cardiology as opposed to secondary prevention. Uh, how would you like to put your pediatric cardiology in the context of WCCMM? I think it's a very unique uh, World Congress where the cardiologists and the diabetologists and other people who are working on metabolic syndrome, they have come together. The, this is the need of the hour because more and more young people are dying of heart diseases in our country. I see. And hardly there is any emphasis on preventive aspect. All that we have been doing for the past few years is like plumbers and uh, carpenters mending the heart. And electrophysiologists. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Trying to mend the heart and that is very expensive. Whereas the simple preventive aspect was not given any importance. And I think in that direction, this is very much needed because more and more young people are dying prematurely in the prime of their life. And to prevent that, we have to understand the real, the problem behind the metabolic syndromes as well as the cardiodiabetic which has not been addressed till now. So you're trying to add, say that this early prevention is always better than the cure. Yes. And how do you put your pediatric cardiology, how early you can diagnose? Do you think that only the congenital diseases have been picked up or you can actually diagnose them even before they were born? Was there any way to pick up the inborn error that even before the baby is born and put forward in, in continuation that we can kind of anticipate that few years down the line, the patient is going to have ABC kind of problem. How we can basically detect and diagnose so such an early stage when the patient is, the baby is actually in the fetus? I think that is the most important one because everybody thinks that after something has occurred to treating, uh, in fact, there is a Chinese proverb which says, the mediocre doctors treat when the full fresh uh, diseases and the medium doctors, they treat when the disease is occurring. And the excellent doctors, the superior doctors treat when even before the di disease occurs. I'm very fortunate to have a superior doctor who diagnosed <laughs> the disease even before the disease has been formed. No, no, what no, else actually, I can say? I'm actually, really fortunate to have you here. No, actually, I'm an inferior doctor because I'm an interventional cardiologist trying to save the babies when they come, when they are dying. You are very to give you an example, uh, the first baby was a stillborn. The next, the mother came when her fetal movements were not occurring. And then they did the cesarean section. The baby did not cry. And then when they got the baby, the baby did not cry. They put the baby on the ventilator and they tried to resuscitate with all the ionotropes, all the drugs, nothing could work. When they did the echo, it was a pinpoint aortic stenosis and the blood pressure could not pick up, come what may. See, unless you mend the heart, inside your drugs are not going to act and then they sent the baby to me within 14 hours after birth I did the balloon dilatation of the pinpoint aortic stenosis and the blood started gushing the baby bloated the appearance went off weaned out of ventilator and then now the baby is 10 years so mischievous mother can't run after the baby so then I realized had they done the fetal echo and detected it in advance, they would have been prepared. See, yeah. the previous baby yeah. stillbirth also could have been prevented. So from then I started concentrating on the fetal echo. And in the fetal echo, when I started doing, I realized that we have to train the mothers, bring the awareness among the young women, even before they conceive. Why this is important is the Baltimore study and other studies they have shown if the mother is smoking, if she's taking sedatives, 
if she is taking antidepressant, if she is even doing the hair dye, all that can affect the baby that is the fetus inside her womb. So, better to start the folic acid before she becomes pregnant and continue it during pregnancy and avoid all these things you know, especially nowadays the women smoking that leads to the premature birth and the women taking alcohol or even husbands taking they will have a ventricle septal defect and also they can have the right sided heart diseases. So, the problem starts with the parents and unless the parents have a good lifestyle, the baby cannot be born. And nowadays you can see that not only the diabetes is rampant in the older people, even the pregnant women are diabetic. Either they are um, uh, uh, pregnancy induced diabetes or even diabetic themselves. And even if it is the pregnancy induced, they are going to chances of they becoming diabetic in future is 27 percent and the baby will be so big and it is really difficult to manage and not only that on top of that if the mother has got any urinary tract infection or anything I have seen <coughs> that the vegetations occurring in the heart where the fetal circulation is occurring along that part and the baby is born with septicemia. In the past we were thinking that any child which is born and dies due to septicemia we were blaming the surrounding but now the real surrounding is inside the mother's womb. Now you I, understand? Uh, Dr. Vijayalakshmi, I probably have to stop you here and I have to ask a quick question. I heard that you were the first one to do some device closure uh, and long ago back home in India. Yeah. Would you like to enlighten us that how was your experience when you did the first time as a, as a lady tomboy <laughs> for cardiology? <laughs> you know what happened? Actually, uh, we were not treating the children uh, way back in 1998. And my good friend Dr. Elizabeth Bronlin, who was a post cardiac transplant pediatric cardiologist. See nowadays we have started doing the cardiac transplant in adult, but she was then 20, 30 years back for the uh, in uh, Minnesota. And she had adopted two children and she came to India. And every time a child came, she would ask, Vijay, what will happen to this child? Vijay, what will happen to this child? 100 children she wrote the diagnosis we were not doing anything and then you know my conscience pricked and she made an arrangement for me to get trained in Minnesota, Mayo Clinic, Boston Children, the best centers and then I came back and we had a workshop the team coming from uh, Mayo Clinic and we started doing the device closure and when we did the device closure and intervention in the newborn babies and then the stalwarts like uh, Stanley John who are famous for their val replacement and all that and they said oh we can do it with surgery where is the need for you to do the device. But when they actually saw the live demonstration where a pulmonary stenosis with a balloon dilatation the gradient came down from 105 to 5 he was surprised. When I closed the AST and the PDA without anything just a tiny scar, 2 millimeter <coughs> scar which heals. And so, so I must say that in summary, the, the, we have the living legend here, Dr. Vijay Lakshmi and then looking at her, India, I must say that Indian cardiology is kind of very fortunate to have you and just by hearing you and then looking at your good work, I can say that the future of the preventive cardiology, neonatal cardiology and pediatric cardiology under your kind supervision looks very, very promising. Now, could I really ask one quick question? What are you going to present in this WCCM and what topic you are going to present? Uh, I presented the, uh, the top 10 uh, pitfalls in making the diagnosis in echocardiography. And the other one is the inborn error of metabolism, how the cardiac manifestation can be detected on the echocardiography. Because echocardiography has become an excellent tool as well as the technology for the cardiologist to make the near perfect diagnosis. Uh, I can tell you that the pathologist will make the diagnosis one day after the death. Whereas the we cardiologists, we make the diagnosis may not be that perfect, but then in time to save the lives. 
and exactly. the echocardiography we, we, is the uh, best We tool. are very unfortunate that we may not have that much of time to listen all your 10 pitfalls, but I would like to hear one of the commonest things that you have been hearing in the morning about the anomalous pulmonary artery circulation and giving rise to the dilated cardiomyopathy. And, and I was hearing, and I found it very fascinating actually to pick up this cardiomyopathy in like such a young baby where I hardly can put the probe. And when I must tell you, when I was doing my training, whenever it comes to the cardiology echocardiography, my hands started to shiver because the baby size somehow was smaller than the probe size. And I struggle a lot to find the right echo window to, to really put the, acquire the correct images. And here you are, not only putting the right echo window, getting the right images and getting the right diagnosis. I just want to know how you picked up that anomalous artery. There's a left coronary artery was uh, kind of originating from something different and giving rise to the dilated cardiomyopathy. No, uh, thank you very much for listening to my talk and then understanding it, you know, being an electrophysiologist, understanding the complex congenital, wonderful. You know, we have the pediatric neonatal probe and the windows in newborn babies is excellent. Gone are the days where the people would imagine because of the clinical findings, but today we take the clinical findings in the background and then, then assess the think. baby. If the child has come with the LV failure, difficulty in thriving, when we do the echo, if the left ventricle is dilated and pumping is reduced, ejection flexion is low, the first thing that we rule out is the coarctation of iota. And then if we don't find that, then rule out the Alcapa, that is the anomalous left coronary artery arising from pulmonary artery. And that will cause the ischemia. The ECG will show the ischemic changes in the Q waves. And when we do the echo, there is a glistening endocardium, which gives a clue that there is a scarring. So if any valve re regurgitation is there or the LV dilatation is there, LV failure is there, go immediately to the short axis and look for the coronary artery. In so the is, there, is there any artery predilection for this kind of thing? Do you think that only the LED is affected or RC or any of the particular artery or it can be any artery or anything? No, any artery, um, um, I mean, if coronary AV fistula is there, that coronary artery will be dilated. But in this alcapa, what happens is the child comes with a failure and then the left coronary artery will not be arising from the iota and it will not be seen. Then we'll have to search from where it is coming then we see the abnormal course of the left coronary I see, artery. I see. So even the uh, coronary AV fistula or coronary cameral fistula, all of them can be detected on the echo. And not only that, they can be corrected with the device closure without surgery. So do you think the CT scan would have been probably the better investigation of choice as opposed to echo or converse is true? See, unless you know what it is, you will not straight away send for CT. Precisely. See, you can't put the horse in front of the, I mean, uh, yeah. you, uh, the cart common in front common, of the horse. Yeah. Exactly. So common you know, thing, common yeah, first. Common thing, common first. Precisely. And when you can do it just 200, 300 rupees an echo and make a diagnosis, why send for CT? And that too, when the heart rate is more and the child is in failure, exactly. the CT will not help. Okay. Okay, so you think the, 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 the uh, echo is probably a better tool of pr yes. primary mode of investigation. Yes. So Dr. Vijay Lakshmi, I would like to s ask you, give us a carry home message or other key points or to summarize few things that, that anybody who is attending the WCCMM should bring back with them so as to improve their practices. I think that's the most important question. The first thing, the prevention has to be started in the intrauterine life. So the fetal echo and the fetal medicine is important. Next, in time detection is very important. And the third one is the children having obesity is increasing in India. And that obesity and uh, also the type one diabetes is causing havoc for the future of the children. And I think we have to start treating from the fetus, the mother, and then yoga, dhyana, stress buster, everything together. And the whole lifestyle has to be changed, including the diet for the children. It's very interesting to hear, Dr. Vijay Lakshmi. It's kind of converse to what I have been hearing back. I mean, to be honest, I have left India about 18 years ago. And those days, I seldom hear that the children are born as obese. Those days were the malnutrition babies and the small size babies. And nowadays, I'm glad to hear that the people are going other way around. At least the nutrition level has improved so far. So that's very good to see. And I, I think you have summarized it very, very well. So I think that the key message is early prevention, then cure is a better thing. Early imaging is the best thing. And with that, I would like to say thank you very much for your attendance. It's thank my you pleasure. Thank you.